Wait, we were playing Yahtzee, right? Hello, future people! Jason the Bruce here with a bit of an unboxing for you. Uh, truth be told, this is actually attempt number four to get this done. Three, four, I'm not 100% sure on the actual numbers. Um, I was trying quite a while last week before things got too busy to try and unbox this for you. And if you want to know why this took so long, have a listen to the coming episode of the podcast. But this week, I am unboxing the Day of the Dead. Sorry, the Desert of the Dead. This is the Pyramid Pile Drivers for Rumble Slam. This came from a Kickstarter that TT Combat did. Well, Troll Trader did. They did it under the parent company name. Uh, for an army of Egyptian undead generic army. This is the only thing I got from that particular Kickstarter. Uh, because I play Rumble Slam and I wasn't really looking for another army. Um, the models from it, when they get released, are amazing, uh, but I only have these. Now, I have actually sn sneaked a peek at this with my attempts to do this last time. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this camera, which is my phone, not this one, this one, will give better footage than last time, because the webcam has a habit of um, only focusing on your face and your hands, and doesn't focus in on the models very well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, there's really not much in the way of mould lines on these, which is really, really nice. Uh, this is a giant scorpion type dude. Uh, for those that are wondering, yes, that is different colours in resin. No, that's not a problem. It's actually more common than you think it is. Um, when you're mixing resin for casting, it usually comes in multiple parts. And depending on the mixture that you use, will depend on the colour that you get. Um, there's also a nice scorpion tail here. A couple of... Um, points where the um, injection was, but that's nothing that you can't clean up. And these guys, I think that one goes on this side. There's actually quite a bit of play there where you could actually get this stuff to, s to move a little bit, but gorgeous, gorgeous model. Um, I will come back in a little bit to have a look at the basic rules for these guys. This model here is a tad more simple because it's smaller and smaller tough stuff tends to be more simple. The only problem with little baggies is they tend to hold onto things and not let you have them. So this is one of the zombie type guys. Um, again very little in the way of mold lines um, and the detail on this is just absolutely phenomenal I'm just going to try and get that to focus a little bit better um, the arms I'm going to leave down on the table at this point they are quite small and spindly again differences in the resin color that's not actually a problem like I'm going to continue saying this and reminding people because it seems to I don't know, people seem to see different colours and assume that there's something wrong with their resin. Um, it's actually, like I said, it's far more normal than most people think it is. However, now, for those that are not familiar with Rumble Slam, what on earth is Rumble Slam? Okay, so, Rumble Slam is Blood Bowl, but if it was wrestling. Now, I'm pretty sure Lewis probably won't like that explanation. But look, it's a sports sim for wrestling tabletop game. Um, it is a lot of fun. It, it has a feel like... Blood. It's not the same game. Um, but it's an association you make almost by default because it's the... It's the biggest of those sort of games. Um, other than maybe there was a cricket one when I was a kid that I've always wanted to play and never been able to. Uh, but that wasn't a tabletop game. It was apparently a very average and crappy board game. So I got told. Um, who are we going to go with next? 
Let's go with... I almost don't need to unbox this one. I think this is the one part model. I could be wrong. Open baggy. Yep. So this is the other sculpt of the previous one that I was just looking at. Again, really nice looking model. I mean, the, the detail in these, but Lewis, if you happen to see this video, you really need to compliment your sculpting team. They, these guys are amazing. I mean, they, that's not unusual. Your guys' sculpting process is always good, but yeah, definitely. Definitely impressive. Um, slight breaking there, which has clearly happened in postage. Uh, that was like that the first time that I unboxed these. Um, if you don't believe me, ask for the footage. I probably have it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I don't. <laughs> um, I, I may have actually deleted it, the original footage, I think. The real, the only real cleanup you're going to have on these guys is where the moulding has come to, not the moulding, where the um, injection points are, which is quite impressive. This one, again, has some extra appendages, including the Queen's head just there. Just really, really gorgeous. I'm trying to put everything back in their bags because things get mixed up and then th and then bruises get confused when he's trying to build things and parts don't go together. Because, yeah, that tends to happen when you mix models up. Come out. George. George, don't laugh at me for having trouble to get things out of bags. So, this one is slightly bigger. You're definitely going to want to wash all of this. For anyone that's not worked a lot with resin, uh, there will be a mold release on this. It'll probably feel very slippery on your fingers. It's like that on purpose. It's how the process works. Uh, a little bit of warm, soapy water. So if you're new to the hobby and you're working with resin for the first time, uh, this is not optional. You must wash them with warm soapy water. Uh, if by chance, for some reason, the manufacturer is telling you that you shouldn't need to, I'd probably still ignore that and do it anyway. Um, I don't know of any that do, but you, you really want to. A little bit of flashing here. These are cloths obviously I suspect that one just because I can see the molding point there uh, also the connection point there I suspect that one's going to be for the crotch of this undead Egyptian queen type lady oh no this is the Anubis one and now I'm wrong because that's the crotch one and have a look at Anubis Focus, focus, focus. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, smart person probably would have had that closer, but anyway. Let's put this stuff away, and I've got one more bag of stuff to go to. That's the big boy, but it's not as big as the big, big boy. This one is sizable. Okay. This one is definitely going to have a lot more cleanup than the other one because that is one giant chunk of resin that you're going to need to carve down. It, it, it's not too difficult to work. There's still a little bit flashing around here. Um, I 
I believe. So that will go in there. A little bit of play there. I think it's supposed to sit like that, but you could move it around a bit if you wanted to. The main event of this particular model. This is the Egyptian Queen that I thought I was looking at earlier. Again, you're going to have some serious cleanup around here. Um, that's, again, very common with resin stuff. Another one of the arms. And finally, more ribbons. Oh wait, no, not finally. We've got some legs. Gotta love the legs. Nice detail in there with the cloth wrapping around the legs. This set is really nice. Uh, you also do come with a couple of things. There's some tokens here for something. I don't know rules-wise what these tokens are for. Uh, you've also got your bases. These are clear acrylic bases. And rules. So, here are cards here for your particular models. This is the first gentleman that we looked at. Uh, so that's King Pandinus. Pandinus? I suspect Pandinus. Um, it's quite nice. Um, I'm not going to go through specific on rules and how they work. Um, but there's different coloured dice that you can get depending on who you're playing with. If every character has their own strengths and weaknesses. This is one of the Shartis. Which is just a lovely name. Um, as this is a weaker one, you can tell they're all bronzy type dice. This is the other sculpt of that. That's the Withered Master. You then also have the Nurti Doorkeeper. The Yeetel. And Queen Cleo. Gee, I wonder where they might have gotten that name from. Um, I would probably argue that it's more fun if you're someone that's into wrestling because you'll get some of the inside stuff. But even if you're not into wrestling and can kind of have a bit of a laugh about it, I mean, it's a game that doesn't take it too seriously but not to the point where it feels stupid. Um, like, you know how you get some games where everything seems to be a joke and so you can't take the game too serious? Um, th this has fun, but it's not dumb. Um, definitely a game that I'd recommend looking at, especially if you're someone that enjoy the likes of Blood Bowl, Guild Bowl, etc. Um, it does play on a grid like Blood Bowl. Um, characters have special abilities and manoeuvres. Um, there's different versions of the game, um, in which case, I mean, I mean, the game is the same. It's just recently had a second edition come out. Uh, there's expansions for the game. In the base game, your main thing is to get people out of the ring, kind of like a Royal Rumble, but a Royal type situation. There's Street Fight expansion and other types of things that you can get to kind of enhance and make the game more interesting. Definitely something I'd recommend if you're into it. Um, if you're not, it's still something I'd recommend. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's the first creation by the TT Combat guys, and it is actually something they created too. Um, otherwise, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Thank you very much for watching.